think your rage broke, Vegeta. Shut up! What was that? I'm not crazy! You're crazy! Especially you! Hey! What is up, Bad Brood? Eric here with Team Badman. Welcome guys back to another edition of Bad Builds, where we take a look at some of the decks we've been working on here at Team Badman to give you guys an idea, of course, what we've been working on, but hopefully some ideas for some of your own decks and maybe help you consider some cards that you guys hadn't considered before, and... <sighs> you guys broke me. I had a different video plan for today. I had a different deck list, one I was uh, really kind of excited about, something I, I you know, had been working on for a while, but on retro, all you guys just kept throwing around the hashtag and just kept asking everywhere, even if it was a joke. I was just like, have you tried Villain Vegeta? And if you've taken a look at us ever since we've been around, if you've ever taken a look at Team Batman, you'll know we're all about Vegeta. We like Vegeta a lot. He, he's our mascot. He's our mascot, for God's sake. So, of course, of course we're going to take Vegeta very seriously. And, you know, that's been at almost any point. You know, at least me personally, I've been playing Vegeta since set one. I've been, you know, figuring out, or at least trying to figure out ways to make, you know, the old Evolution Hero Vegeta stack work. And I was beyond thrilled when the new stack from Awakening came, and Vegeta's actually seeing some plays. So that made me really, really happy. But you guys just can't do that. You you can't just be like, have you done this with Vegeta? Have you tried this with Vegeta? And expect us not to do something. I had to do it. You guys are killing me. God! As expected, today's deck is all about villain Vegeta. It's... It's an old-style, just straight beat-em-up stack, and that's all that Vegeta was all about. He didn't rank tremendously high on the uh, AT table. Even at the time he came out, he was still outclassed by a uh, few MPs that were out there. Uh, the whole Beats idea, while it still was his, uh, was almost done a little bit better by Frieza and Trunks, and even Goku to an extent. Um, the big thing that Vegeta had was those monstrous, monstrous anger gain modifiers, which made sense, because he was paired with the Saiyan Empowered Mastery, and he always gained anger, he always dealt out a lot of damage, it was just what he did. And now, going back and looking at this Vegeta stack, as well as, uh, as, well as every other Vegeta stack while I was actually doing this deck, uh, it kind of reminded me that... Vegeta kind of sucks. No, 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 I'm not trying to say that in a necessarily bad way, especially considering that we now have the free Vegeta stack, which you can basically be on any level with that stack, and you're in a really comfortable spot as long as your deck is composed the right way. But an inherent flaw with the villain Vegeta and the original Hero Gia stacks are he starts out very weak and very, very slow. Uh, the higher levels on those stacks, and even Vegeta's current stack, are just miles better than the lower levels, and they're exactly where you want to get to. They're a uh, big deal, they're massively, massively important, and for a long time, Vegeta didn't have that, especially the villain stack, which was uh, continuously lambasted by just a terrible, terrible level one, a moderate level two, a level three you couldn't seem to stay on long enough, and uh, a level four that didn't quite stack up to the level three. And it only got worse when Heroes of Villains came out and Wallbreaker hit, and this whole notion of Vegeta can't use his modifiers because not actually gaining anger hit. So Vegeta just fell off really, really hard. And it's nice to see him finally back there, but it, it's, it takes a little bit of finesse to actually work with this villain Vegeta stack, especially with such a poor level one. Which is why we paired him today with the Saiyan Dynamic Mastery. If there's one thing that this mastery has, it's letting you start on level two. It's a free blue dominance. It's a free five, six anger, whatever you want to call it. But that's the main thing it does. Now the advantage here for the villain Vegeta stack is that all of your styled attacks that don't gain anger automatically do gain anger, which is fantastic because we all know Vegeta's two and Vegeta's three, as long as you're gaining anger, you're getting modifiers and modifiers are very, very important. So uh, that's kind of the whole crux around this. Helps you get off that really, really weak level one uh, and it gives you a little bit of traction. And of course there are some cards in here to really get you going to where you want to. Uh, but Dynamic was kind of the most natural fit. You don't need to really uh, finagle with some crazy anger tech cards. Uh, you don't need to try and work with something like the Retribution Mastery in order to get your higher levels. You just kind of get rolling a little bit faster. So today we are taking a look at Saiyan Dynamic Villain Vegeta. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And one thing you'll notice about this deck list 
that a lot of other Villain Vegeta deck lists won't necessarily want to approach is we have allies. We have Saiyan allies because we like them. We like modifiers in Vegeta. Vegeta likes them a lot. He likes hitting things really hard. Thanks, Kitty. I appreciate you. So this deck does have allies, and of course, the main reason for having them all in there is additional modifiers, which comes from one particular ally that just about every Saiyan deck loves, and that is the Turles ally. Turles gives you an extra plus one stage modifier for every Saiyan personality that's on the field. And of course, this applies for Vegeta himself because he's a Saiyan personality, and it's the only way that Turles works. So uh, as long as Turles is out, you've got plus two stage to every attack, and if you've got all of your other allies out, that's even more damage that you're dealing out. And I don't know if you noticed, but Villain Vegeta loves modifiers. That's his whole thing. And while he's kind of outclassed by Brawly in that regard, because Brawly, uh, you know, has some actual actions on his levels and a higher power level, and doesn't necessarily need the anger gain to do his thing, uh, Villain Vegeta still has his niche in uh, very sizable modifiers on a on a fairly you know reasonable level. Uh, he's got the ability to force your opponent to block and attack. They may not necessarily want to in that level two attack, especially if you already have some modifiers up. Uh, and, you know, he deals out some chip life card damage as well on all of his stage attacks, uh, particularly on that level 3, so uh, he does have the ability to, you know, hit on both fronts a little bit, and he can deal even more damage than Brawly uh, if he manages to throw off the right attacks at the right time, so uh, it's a really big deal, and Turles helps you get uh, a little bit of that extra oomph in there. In this case, it's a more is better kind of card, and that's not always the case in some decks, but in this deck, you really kind of want that, so that's what we went for here. Alongside that, we have a suite of, as I mentioned, strictly Saiyan allies that all have some great utility. Uh, first is the Cell ally, who did see a lot of play in the early Vengeance meta, but then kind of fell off. Uh, now is a really good time for it to come back, because, of course, freestyle attacks are, again, getting big because of a lot of popular named cards, a lot of those choices. Uh, so those are going to cost an extra one stage. Uh, of course, this does affect Vegeta as well, and he does have some key non-style attacks in here, but uh, it's not going to be too much of a hamper. And uh, your style attacks deal an extra life card of damage. Again, modifiers, they're great. They're just fantastic. Uh, the more damage you can deal, the better. So Cell helps you out on both fronts for that. Next up is Nappa. Uh, of course, Nappa is one of the most well-known Saiyan allies since the beginning of the game. Shutting off setups is a huge, huge deal, and while it does impact some of your own cards just a little bit, uh, it's not not necessarily a terrible thing to have, especially when uh, you know board decks kind of start making a little bit of resurgence. You've seen it in some of the Roshi decks; they've gotten really popular. Um, there are some other decks that do run setups. Uh, you know, Gohan decks uh, tend to run them periodically. Goku decks can run them. Uh, there are. A, there are a lot of setups that are just, you know, really popular and really, really effective, shutting off Red Relaxation or Blue Rebuke or Visiting the Past. Any of those are just really powerful to hit, and of course, Nappa helps you do that, so why not? And lastly, we have the Brawly ally. Now, this is one that didn't see a huge amount of play because of its very interesting nature. So, right out the gate, Brawly shuts off your MPPV, which, of course, you're not really going to MPPV in Dynamic anyway, and it sort of emulates the Saiyan Empowered mindset, uh, since you couldn't, you know, already win anyway. But uh, it can be a little bit dangerous with Unleashed around, uh, except for the part where Brawly's next sentence says, uh, MPs cannot be lowered by uh, card effects as long as your MP is a Saiyan, which, of course, you are. So the advantage to having that here is uh, Vegeta does like getting up to his higher levels, and getting deleveled sucks for him. He loses a lot of momentum, he can lose a lot of potential here. Uh, so being able to shut that off is a big, big deal. Uh, and then his last sentence says, if cards discard after use, it gets banished instead. So this can also be really, really dangerous, uh, particularly you know since there are a lot of really strong attacks that don't banish themselves after use, which you're going to see in here eventually. Uh, but it also hampers your opponent a bit as well because you get some of those key cards that you know will constantly get recurred out of the way. Uh, you've got Times of Warriors Tools, perfect example that gets banished. Unleashed gets banished. Spheres get banished. Named cards get banished. Lots and lots of stuff gets hit. Uh, Brawly is really kind of a tester ally in this deck. Uh, he seems to be doing all right, but he's also a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, you can get yourself stuck, or you can uh, you know kind of screw yourself out of the ability to mess with your opponent's momentum by deleveling them, which of course you'll get to see here in a little bit. But uh, it rounds out a pretty reasonable package, 
And uh, together with Vegeta and the Turtles ally, that's a plus five modifier to all of your attacks if all of your allies are out. So that's some very sizable damage right there. It's great stuff, uh, and it's a little bit of incentive to actually run the allies in here, and they've been doing well, so no complaints here. Of course, uh, after this, we're going to go into the setups. We don't have any drills in this deck, though Saiyan does have some very usable ones like uh, Saiyan Analysis Drill to lower anger, or Saiyan Protection Drill to mitigate some damage. But that's not tremendously what we're worried about. Uh, and instead, we're just going to jump right into the setup, starting off with three copies of Saiyan Recovery. Uh, this is fantastic on so many levels. First off, uh, it lets you get a glimpse into your opponent's hand so you know what to expect. Second, you get to draw an extra card, which, of course, card advantage is great. Uh, third, it shuts off combat ending effects, which combat enders are really popular right now. You'll see a lot of blinding energy move, black power up, or Earth Dragon Ball 7. So being able to shut those off is a big, big deal, and uh, it kind of it brings together a really, really solid package in this card. Not to mention the card has four endurance, and while it tends to be more effective in rampaging decks, you can because uh, you can always pitch it to the mastery and you can get an extra attack out of it. Uh, and here, as long as you get it on the field and you get inside into your opponent's hand, that's, um, it's just good. It's good. It gives you, uh, you know, a little bit of the kind of brawly niche because Brawly loves to draw cards. He's really good at it, and that's kind of his whole focus there. So, uh, recovery gives you a little bit of that effect, uh, and it's important for Vegeta because you want to know, you know, how many attacks you're going to hit with, uh, what you're going to be swinging into, what you can expect. So, uh, that's really important there. And it, it's a very, very powerful setup for Saiyan. After that is one copy of Saiyan Extreme Training. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a setup that was popular for a while in a lot of Cell decks, because you did have that whole notion that uh, you, know, you could just constantly abuse uh, the old level 3 by uh, using your power, uh, banish 5 cards from your opponent's discard pile, and then proc Extreme Training lower your anger to zero, use a critical damage effect, and just stay on that level. So, uh, you know, that way you could just uh, feel you know, really, really kind of comfortable with where you were at, particularly after the CRD 4.3 errata that said Cell could only use his lowering power once per game from level four. In this deck, you want to stay on level three, just like Cell. So this is one that helps you do that, particularly since you're going to want to be gaining anger from all of your attacks, so that way you can get the modifier but you don't necessarily want to level off that three. So instead, uh, Extreme Training gives you the ability to just cycle your anger right back down to zero, use a crit, continue the raw beats potential, uh, plus it's got more endurance on it. Four endurance, yet again for a card. That's absolutely great, uh, but you don't really need more than one copy, otherwise it gets uh, a little bit cloggy, and you don't, you know, you can't get uh, multiple effects out of it if you have multiple attached, because you can only lower your anger once. So. All you really need is the one, once it's attached, you're generally pretty set to go. And lastly, of course, we have uh, one copy of Tree of Might. We like modifiers. I mentioned that. So Tree of Might gives you another modifier. Plus two stages uh, is great, just about anywhere you can think of. Uh, and it actually, it works really well, even at the start of the game on level two, because you get a little bit more of a buff to that, uh, that base attack, which is only four stages, so it's not very strong at all, not particularly great. But even with Tree of Might attached, that's six stages, and it's actually enough to make your opponent question, do I want to let that hit and give them the extra plus one, plus one modifier? Four stages is a little easier to take. Six is actually a little bit harder to justify, surprisingly. So uh, this can be very effective for that. And of course, uh, you know, you just you stack up the damage in this deck, and this is a big card to help you do that. Big deal. Naturally, after that, we're going to progress into the events on it's, it's a very solid event suite, uh, pretty natural for a lot of Saiyan decks, but there's one fun option here that I actually really, really enjoy in this deck, and I hope it's something you'll consider trying. So, of course, we have to start off with three copies of Saiyan Outrage, quintessential Omniblock. Uh, it's not tremendously often that you will find that, uh, you know, your power level is going to be higher than your opponent's unless you're really, really raining the beat down. And we don't have Vegeta's Anger in this deck, I will spoil that now. Uh, it's, it's nice as an attached card, but uh, it's not necessarily needed for this deck, and it kind of slows it down a little bit, so uh, that's been omitted. But there are other attached cards that we can grab. Of course, uh, the Extreme Training and the Tree of Might, we have already seen. There are some more in here that we can attach. So there are plenty of options to still grab with it, and in, uh, if you're in the right position, you can go ahead and get that attached card make everything work. But otherwise, it's just your Omni Block, and there's nothing wrong with that. Next up is two copies of Unleashed. I hate running this card. 
I legitimately hate using this card in a lot of decks because it seems like, it almost seems like a crutch for a lot of decks. Like, oh, I can't level fast enough? Might as well unleashed. And it's obnoxious. It's really kind of obnoxious and I hate using it, but Dynamic is not a fast angering mastery. It's not, that six anger hump is a lot harder to get over than I think some players realize. Uh, it's like having protective mastery back all over again, except you're doing it to yourself. And sure, you get you know the extra anger from attacks that don't have anger in the text box, but compared to Empowered, it's just not enough. It's really not. So you wanna to get to that level three. Unleashed helps you do it. It can also mess with your opponent. Uh, and if you're able to get the Brawly ally out right after that, you're pretty set. You can just stay where you want to. Uh, you grab your extreme training, attach it, and just continually stay on level three. Uh, two is because of the room. I mean, there is enough anger in this deck to naturally level three, but it's not gonna happen often. Uh, so three was excessive in this deck. It was just really excessive. And yeah, you want to draw it early, but you need room for the attacks, you need room for other tech. And I I didn't like it at three, so cut it down to two. Uh, and it's it's fine. It's just fine as it is. I don't like running the card, but it's you know, it also helps you just get there faster. It's not necessary, but it helps you get there faster. Next up is two copies of Battle Pausing. This is a card that hasn't seen a whole lot of play, but is really, really fun when it works. So yeah, it's a break-even card. You play it, you banish card from your hand, you draw the top two of your discard pile. But if you set this up right, this can be a game-winning card. Uh, particularly with some of the other tech that we have here in this deck. Uh, some really, really fun stuff. But it, it's always satisfying when you can be like, oh, all right, I'm gonna battle pausing. I'm gonna get uh, a dig and a, a final flash or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna get you know these ridiculously powerful you know cards I know for a fact are going to go through because you don't have any more blocks. So I'm just gonna pummel you for tons and tons of damage. Uh, sure, your opponent gains stages off of that, but you're dealing so much damage anyway that it doesn't particularly matter. You can usually make up for the five stages that they gain back with just one attack, especially if you have your allies out or Tree of Might attached or just about anything that deals a reasonable amount of stage damage and you've got some sort of advantage. So uh, it's really, really solid as a means of extending out combat with just the right cards, but it's not always gonna work for every situation. So, uh, you know, it's it's worth a try. Uh, I enjoy it in here. I've always enjoyed it in Villain Vegeta, but it's definitely not for everyone and you could cut it for some other cards if you weren't really feeling it. And lastly, Time is a Warrior's Tool. Yeah. So next, of course, we have physical combat cards. Vegeta likes these, Saiyan likes these, Saiyan has a lot of good ones. We're gonna start off with three copies of Saiyan Grab. This is a major advantage for Villain Vegeta because, well, you get to draw extra cards. You can make it unstoppable. You get a lot of modifiers off of it. It's super, super cool for that. We all know how good it is courtesy of Brawly, but before Brawly, there was Villain Vegeta and this is, this is a card that he just loves. It can deal uh, a reasonable amount of damage, surprisingly, especially if you set it up right. Uh, the ability to draw a card is great. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's not particularly strong, but drawing the card is its entire strength. Uh, and I'm glad he's a villain so that we can specifically use this card. Pretty awesome. Next up is three copies of Saiyan Left Kick. Uh, it's one of your quintessential physicals, AT plus four life. Immediately raise your anger, so you get that mod from the mastery. Uh, it's got endurance on it. Pretty solid all around. Next up is three copies of Saiyan Overhead Kick. Uh, if you'll notice in this deck, we like kicking things a lot. There are a lot of cards with kick in the title. And of course, this is one of the big ones. We like teching out allies in this deck because we have them. And Overhead Kick is your Saiyan ally tech. So uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage. It's four stages. It's banished after use. Not super strong but you get the ability to tech out any of your Saiyan allies. Uh, and early on in the game, that's a big deal. Late game, you can pull out your allies that aren't out yet and use this kind of a closer. Uh, it's mainly just here for the tech. I mean, you can finagle it to do some decent damage, but that's not what it's here for. Uh, since we've got enough allies for it, a full suite of three works pretty well. Next is three copies of Saiyan Spin Kick. Uh, immediate anger, large opponent's anger, 
risk here is you destroy an ally, and if your opponent doesn't have allies, you have to pop off one of your own. So that can suck a little bit, but uh, it's, it deals out enough damage. It's got the endurance. It's got the immediate anger tech. Uh, it's plenty usable enough, and um, you don't necessarily need to have you know your allies out when you throw this. So uh, you do have the potential to get a lot more mileage out of it than uh, your opponent might expect, uh, especially if ally decks start you know creeping back up. If Gohan with allies becomes a big thing, if Cooler comes back and has his allies, if Goku starts you know teching all of his allies, there's you know there's a lot that Spin Kick can do, and it's almost quintessential Saiyan tech at this point. Next is three copies of our last kick. Finally, we're out of the kicks. Saiyan Upward Kick. Uh, this is one that did see play around the time of the movie collection uh, and then fell off. But now it's a card that should probably come back because MPs like gaining stages. There are two masteries that are really kind of dedicated to gaining stages. There are abilities to gain stages in uh, Blue Resolute with the cards that you can discard. Uh, it's a good time to be able to stop your opponent from gaining stages and Upward Kick helps you do that. Plus it's AT plus four, very sizable damage. Uh, does get the anger proc from the mastery, which is great. And it combos with battle pausing. You can go ahead and get your cards back and your opponent can't gain any stages because of this card. It's pretty awesome. I wish it did a little bit more, it had a little bit more to it. Maybe even like one spot of endurance would be great. But you know, it's, it's all right for what it is. AT plus four is a very solid attack. Uh, it's super useful right now. It really honestly is. Next up is three copies of I'll Dig Your Grave. Damage prevention is something you don't want in this deck because you just want to deal out a ton of damage. And I'll Dig Your Grave helps you do that. Uh, flat six stages outright. Sure, you don't get uh, Vegeta's modifiers from it because it doesn't raise your anger. But between the Tree of Mites in here and uh, the Turtles Ally, you can still deal out some very reasonable damage with this. Uh, in emergency, you can always use the hit effect. Go ahead and jump yourself up. You really need to get to that three early on, and it's not going to be too much of a deal against your opponent. Maybe they're a level one camping deck, or maybe you've got a lot of anger tech answers in your hands, or maybe you have that unleashed and you can de-level your opponent however you want to do it. But I'll Dig Your Grave is a big part of making sure you maximize your damage output. Uh, and that's completely expected. Uh, very, very strong. Love this since it came out in set three. It's been a three of staple in my Villain Vegeta decks, and I hope it is in yours as well. Next up is three copies of Shoulder Slam. Double AT damage, Razor Anger outright, so you do get those modifiers. Got some Endurance, got some Anger Hate. Uh, all in all, super strong. Uh, I definitely prefer it in this deck over a card like Saiyan Trample, because while you do you know, net uh, the Anger off that, and you still do get the double AT, it's not as effective. It's uh, just Shoulder Slam is better in this deck, and it's in here for an obvious, obvious reason. Next up is two copies of Sagacious Strike. Wallbreaker sucks. Sure, we have Unleashed. We can get rid of Wallbreaker. It's totally fine. But we don't want it on us, period. Plus, the ability to crit on command uh, is very, very nice, especially for uh, you know getting rid of some allies that might get in your way, like uh, the Chi Chi or Piccolo allies or being able to prolong combat by capturing something like Earth Dragon Ball 3 or Namek Dragon Ball 5, whatever it might end up being. Crits on command are nice, uh, Skation Strike helps you do that, so pretty good, pretty good. And lastly is two copies of Sobering Hammer. Uh, we do need some more ally tech outside of uh, just the overhead kicks, so this can help you do that. Not strong, not meant to be. The hit effect is a major, major boon to this card because it prevents your opponent from using any of their effects jump levels. So you can screw an opponent up using their Unleashed, which all it takes is one turn preventing them from using that to completely screw their game plan. So uh, this is very effective for that. Uh, it's almost solely in here's the ally tech. The hit effect is super nifty. I like it. Uh, it was, you know, I find it to be a little bit better of an option because that hit effect over overpowering attack. But either one works, depending on how you want to get your allies out. It's fine either way. And of course, we need blocks. Blocking things is good. Blocking attacks is very important because Vegeta isn't very high on the AT table in his villain stack. So uh, we do need blocks. We have three copies of Saiyan Arm Catch, Endurance, Anger, very, very standard. Uh, you know, it's one of those tools to help you get off your level two, up to three, uh, solid all around. And two copies of Saiyan Flip. Now, I like this card here in Villain Vegeta because on his key level, which is three, 
He doesn't reach very high on the ATs. Max power level is 125,000, which there are level ones in the game now that far and away exceed that. So the most you'll be doing off of that is four stages from the AT. So why not just do that outright with say and flip? That way all of your attacks consistently have four stages from the AT regardless of their power level. Uh, it screws out some of the higher power level MPs like uh, like Brawly or Gohan or Trunks and it forces them to kind of come down to an even keel level. You can search it out with Unleashed, you can search it out with Outrage. It's got some endurance on it. It's really, really nice for Vegeta to actually have, especially when you're throwing uh, you know, attacks like Upward Kick and Shoulder Slam and Left Kick. The more damage you can do consistently, the better. That's what Vegeta likes. That's what we got here. Uh, and of course, we do have some energy combat cards because Vegeta's name cards are basically energy combat cards. All very important. They all gain anger, so they work with villain Vegeta, and they're a big, big part of his entire package. So of course, we need to have those in here. And we start off with three copies of Vegeta's Final Flash. Uh, two anger outright, can only be stopped by an energy combat card, force your opponent to attack or pass, so they play on your level. Vegeta wants to attack. Just attack a lot. That's kind of what he does. He doesn't really have any other focus. So yeah, he has a little bit of a blind beat stick, but Final Flash helps you screw out a lot of those control decks trying to mess with you. Or the decks try to jump levels with Unleashed. There's a surprising amount of answers to Unleashed in this deck. Huh, go figure. So, uh, Final Flash helps you do that. It gets that extra damage proc. Uh, you can always lower yourself a level if somehow you got up to level four, or maybe you want to get some stages back, whatever it might be. Uh, it's super strong name card all around. Tons, tons of potential, works very well in the stack. Next, of course, three copies of Vegeta's Gallic Gun. Uh, this is the original power named card. Uh, unpreventable damage, median anger gain, so you do get that uh, extra damage proc. On uh, level three, it's guaranteed uh, nine, sta nine life cards and three stages. Unpreventable, if it hits, you get a double crit. Sure, it's not as effective as it is in the current free Vegeta stack, but that doesn't make it any less powerful, and it's really, really solid here. Very important. Uh, lastly, we have two copies of Saiyan Domination. Uh, it's, again, it's not going to be very often that you're going to have the higher power level to prevent your pump from playing events, but all it takes is that one time to do it. Again, another Unleashed answer, but you also answer a bunch of other events. You answer Black Scout Maneuver, you answer Times a Warrior's Tool, uh, you answer uh, Mercenary Tau's Puzzles. You answer a lot of options here. So, uh, it's very, very you know, easy to work with uh, since it does get the anger gain off the mastery, you do get additional modifiers to it, uh, and it does a, a reasonable amount of damage. It's not too bad, and at the right time, this can just help you further along your cause a little bit better. So that's not too bad at all. And of course, uh, we do need blocks as well over here, kind of important. Uh, three copies of Saiyan Hand Swipe are in here, because as I mentioned a lot, we like modifiers. Hand swipe helps you do that. Extra plus three life to your next attack is very, very strong. Endurance three is great. Uh, and while it does have the surprising negativity of being a physical combat card that uh, stops you know, an energy attack, which means you can't use it against things like Final Flash or Destruction Blast or uh, Mechian Hand Burst, uh, there's not really enough of those around play to make it any less effective as an option. So, uh, very, very nice to have back in here. And two copies of Saiyan Crouch, our last attached card. Uh, Vegeta likes having stages when he doesn't have flip attached, so uh, this helps you do that a little bit more. You gain extra plus three to your PUR, which is just absolutely great all around. Very, very solid. Uh, block has got extra endurance. Uh, you can always pull it out and just put it right back into your deck with Unleashed. Uh, and it rounds out a suite of very solid cards for Vegeta altogether. So, that's Villain Vegeta. You guys asked, you guys didn't stop. God dang it, Kitty, what are you doing? So that's Villain Vegeta. You guys broke me. You guys asked, not me specifically, but you guys just, you kept bringing up the hashtag, and it's why we're here. Uh, it's a nice callback to the old Villain Vegeta decks I used to play, and this one was actually really fun to put together. It's been a long time since I looked at that stack, looked at the options and the possibilities, uh, but as a deck, it it feels like Brawly. I don't like saying that, but it feels a lot like Brawly. That's what Villain Vegeta was before Brawly came around, and that's what he's going to continue to be. He's, gonna, he's just going to be kind of Brawly light, though I like his name cards 
far and away better than Brawly's name cards. Uh, you don't get as much of the hand drawing advantage or as much of the continuous punishment, uh, but you get a much easier ability to close out a game in one single combat because of because that plus three plus three modifier is just insane and applies to all your attacks gain anger, not just your physical combat cards. So you get the flexibility of including these super solid named cards in here. You also get a ton of modifiers off Turles. You get extra modifiers from your Tree of Might. Uh, you just put it together and you can, you just smash serious face. You seriously can, but that's also its downfall, is it's very much like the Turles and the Brawly kind of vein. If you can't hit, you can't deal damage, uh, you're not doing anything. You can't actually do anything. So it's not a deck for everyone. It's a deck for a very, very uh, aggro niche of players who just likes being in your face and just likes making your opponent you know, wonder, how much can I take? How much can I take? But at the same time, they're not going to necessarily know what to expect because it's not Brawly. It's Brawly they know what to expect. With Villain Vegeta, you don't know because you don't see him. So... There's uh, there's still some aggro beats potential in here, but this is more kind of just a, a fun side deck as opposed to something I would take to a major, major event. If you guys can prove me wrong, please do. I would love to see it. We love Vegeta, and it was refreshing coming back to this. So I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this deck list. If you did, be sure to click that like button down below, give me a thumbs, I'd love to see him. If not, click the dislike button down below and let me know what you guys didn't like so that way I can change it for future episodes. Also, if you guys haven't hit the subscribe button down below, please be sure to do so, so that you can follow this series and all of our other series. Uh, we just finished up our Xenoverse 2 playthrough as of today, so be sure to check all of that out. There's an entire playlist for all of that, uh, and I'll be sharing that out here sometime really, really soon. Uh, we're going to have some great new stuff coming up here. Uh, you know, more new podcasts, more new matches, tons of great stuff, so be sure to keep an eye out for all that. And lastly, if you guys haven't found us on social media, all those links are down below too. So you guys can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Libsyn. So I'm sure to check all those out, listen to our latest podcast, and just come say hey. We'd love to interact with you guys. So that's going to do it for this video. I'm Eric Team Badman signing out. So thank you guys for watching. And like always, stay bad. We'll see you guys next time. Catch you later. What are you doing, kid? Come here. See, see, say hi to the camera, buddy. Say hi to the camera. See, see, there you go. <laughs>